Good evening, friends. I'm very grateful to be here tonight again. Just let your while ago. <laughs> I think right around four o'clock, and then I had to. Uh, we went out to see some more friends and got back five minutes after seven. Just had to come back down, so I'm kind of having to hunt a text yet, Brother Neville. But now there is a request that just was called in from someone in Chattanooga, Tennessee. A uh, loved one that was in a wreck three weeks ago and is lying unconscious still and requests prayer here from the church. And, yes, you sure can, Brother. You must be part of it. Yes, sir. I just almost forgot I made a promise to make an announcement tonight. We were, we were speaking of Mel Chesedick, who he was. And we, nothing like got through with it, but maybe the next time coming in, we can pick up from there. Still in the book of Hebrews. But tonight, we turn over to the book of Daniel. And you with your Bibles, turn to Daniel 12. And we're going to read a little from there. And talk, maybe, on some of God's Word out of the book of Daniel. Now, Daniel... Was one of the was the prophet that was carried from Jerusalem down into Babylon in the carrying away of Babylon by King Nebuchadnezzar. He was a young fellow when he went out into Babylon. There was uh, not um, many of them that had still holding out the grand old faith. I like Daniel because <clears throat> his he had purpose that in his heart when he went down into Babylon that he was going to remain a believer. Amen. And he wasn't going to file himself with the king's meats and Amen. so forth. Now, the very thing, and Daniel was the prophet to the Gentiles. Daniel saw all the Gentile age rise and fall. He was the first one to be, we call the Gentile prophet. He was a Gentile himself, but he saw the Gentile dispensation from start to finish in the head of gold and ending up in the feet of iron and clay. And while down in there purposing in his heart that he wouldn't defile himself with the king's meats and with the king's affair, and another group of brethren named Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was down there with them, which was not prophets, but believers. And they also purposed in their heart. And then... When those four <coughs> believers come together, I'd imagine quite oftenly they had prayer meetings together. Amen. Just like we do, we get together because we have things in common. You know, there's an old slogan that says, birds of a feather flock together. Amen. And that's uh, an old proverb, brother. And that's a pretty good thing, too. Amen. Birds of a feather flock together. Aren't you happy for that? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Birds of a feather flock together. Not long ago, I was sitting in a meeting where there was a man discussing something, and he said, well, he's talking about the souls that went to prison, or was in prison, that Jesus went and preached to after his death. And this man that was speaking said, well, what do you think about it? And a colored brother raised up. He said, well, that's just what the Bible said. He went and preached to souls that were in prison. So what do you think it was? That it was souls that didn't repent. And the long suffering of the days of Noah while the ark was being prepared. Just like the Bible said. He said, no. He said, that's this church preaching to those Pentecostal people that's in these denominations and everything. Bring them out of prison. He said, now nah, look here, brother. <laughs> he said, Pentecost wasn't even mentioned there. He said that he just said that he went and preached to the souls that were in prison. So... I said, Amen. That's right. And the minister looked around at me and said, Birds of a feather flock together. <laughs> I said, That's right. Brothers of like precious faith, believing just what the Scripture says is the truth. Daniel had three of those companions that were with him. You know, it's good when you're away from home to find somebody that's with you. Somebody that will stand by you. A real good friend. Oh my, in foreign lands, when you find someone who wants to be your buddy and loves you and stands by you, that's worth so much. Especially a stranger. And these brethren 
were taken away from their city and their city was burned and all their vessels and the holy things of God had been taken down into Babylon and was put in the treasure house of King Nebuchadnezzar who had carried out a great great Gentile king. Now, if, if God has permitted that for their city to be burned, their church burned, and taken them down into the city, it was because that they had got away from God. But he still had a believer that he could put his hands on and say, this is my servant. God has always had a witness somewhere. Amen. He never leaves himself without a witness. No matter if it's got down sometimes to just one, but he's always had somebody that he could put his hands on and say, this is my servant. And he'll do as I tell him. Now, we like that. Noticing then that when these brethren were down there, they were put to a test. Very beautiful example of what a true believer comes to when he really accepts the Lord Jesus as his Savior. He's always put to a test. Amen. Satan still in the testing business. And it only comes about to help you. It's for your good. Every son that cometh to God must be tried, chastened, scourged. And in other words, give a little thrashing, straightening up. And if God gives us some chastisement and we can't stand it, then we become illegitimate children and not the children of God. Amen. Now, a man that's really got his face set towards heaven, no matter what takes place here on earth, he's still got his face set towards heaven. Amen. His friends may forsake him. His family may forsake him. His pastor may forsake him, but there's one that won't forsake him. Amen. That's Amen. God. Amen. And when your mind is made up, I like that. Daniel had burned all the bridges behind him. He wasn't planning on going back anymore. Amen. He wasn't watching his back trail. He was looking, forsaking those things which are in the past. He pressed on to the mark of the high calling. Amen. Amen. That's what we should be doing. That's what the church should be doing. And as I noticed then, God permitted Satan to give him the test. And all they tested him by the fire. They tested him also by the lion's den. And in every instant, God brought him out more than victorious. Many are the testings of the righteous, but God delivereth him out of them all. Amen. How marvelous that is. How we appreciate that. Trials, tribulations, tests. All working for the good. Amen. After a while, God can see then and He can put His trust in you. And then He'll do great things for you. Now we find out then that Daniel became an instrument in the hand of God while he was away from his own people, out of his own city, away from his own church, in a strange land, God used him. Now you can be away from Whatever you may be, you can be away from all your loved ones or you can be away from your church, but you can still be an instrument in the hands of God. God can use you for a testimony or for anything that he wishes to use you for. Beautiful examples. The Bible is just so chug full of those things. Everywhere you turn, don't you love to read the word? Oh, I just read it sometime and weep. Here a few days ago, I was reading in the room there, and I just had to sit down and cry like a baby. I got up, walked around my chair, put my hand on my chair, looked down my Bible again, I just broke out, went around the chair again, looked back at it again, I thought, oh God, in there is eternal life Amen. to every man or woman that will dare to put their trust in it and believe it. Eternal life. And he said, search the scriptures for... In them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. Yes. Search the scripture. The word of God is a lamp unto our feet, that we, sh if we should be guided then. It's the light that follows the pathway that leads us from victory unto victory. Amen. Now, before you can have a victory, there has to be a battle. And if there's no battles, there's no victories. Amen. So we ought to be thankful for the battles and the tryings. It's God giving us the opportunity to have victories. Amen. Oh my, don't that make it a little bit better now? 
See, the battle will come along, somebody saying something bad about you. Sickness come on to you. Maybe God give you those light afflictions that he might heal you and show his favor to you. Let you see what he means by it. He loves you. Amen. The old shepherd story that was told there in Jerusalem in the holy lands of the shepherd was packing a, a sheep. And he said, what you packing it for? He said, it's got a broken leg. He said, how to do that fall over a cliff? He said, no, I broke its leg. He said, well, you're a cruel shepherd to break that sheep's leg. No, I loved it. And said it was going astray and I couldn't make it mind me, so I broke its leg so I could give it some extra attention so then it would love me and follow me. Amen. Sometimes God has to let us break down just a little bit in hell Amen. to give us a little extra attention, Amen. to get us up on his lap, to woo us up in his bosom. When the doctor said nothing can be done, then he'd take us into his bosom. Say, see, I love you. I'm going to let you get well. Amen. Oh, doesn't that just make life a little better? Amen. Oh, he's so great. He's a marvelous shepherd, isn't he? No wonder David said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. <laughs> How he leads us to the side of the still waters and restores our soul and runs our cups over and, and anoints us in the presence of the enemy. Did you ever get anointed in the presence of your enemy? Just to testify to your cup just borrowed over, you know. Just how marvelous it is to be anointed in the presence of your enemy. Now, notice, then God took King Nebuchadnezzar and made him a tool in his hand. And when King Nebuchadnezzar died, after he had the grass grew out, his hair like lion, or like eagle's feathers, and his fingernails like the claws of the eagle, and so forth. And God had to let him know who was the real king. After his death, Belteshazzar, his grandson, su succeeded him. And then he was more wicked than King Nebuchadnezzar. And one night there, they had a great big party. They called all their, their magistrates and all the officers in for a great big jamboree. And while they were having this jamboree, and they were, went and called out and took the vessels, the holy vessels of God, just to make fun of God, and drank wine to their gods, a toast out of the vessels of the Lord. Now, a man is permitted to travel so far, but there's a separating line between life and death. You must never cross that. See, you can go on with your little foolishness for a while, but you better know where the line is. Amen. Did the Lord ever check you on anything? He does all of us pull the check reins and it's far enough now. Then you better watch what you're doing from then on. If you're stepping across towards that line. And that night when God pulled the check reins on him and he wouldn't listen, goes on down and brings out the vessels of the Lord begin to drink wine and a toast to their gods. Then there came a hand down out of heaven and wrote on the wall, teeny, teeny, tecla, parisha, means thou art weighed in the balance and found wanting. No one could interpret it. It was unknown tongues. And there was a man there who had the gift of interpretation, Daniel. So he comes down and interprets and tells the king what would happen. And there God destroyed that nation. Amen. Babylon. While Daniel being there, he saw great visions and wrote concerning them for this great consolation that we have today, knowing and setting in order the end of the Gentile kingdom. Amen. Notice how perfect. Just get it close now. He's seen first the image standing in the field. When he interpreted the dream of the king, he was a spiritual man. He dreamed dreams, saw visions, interpreted dreams. God was with him. And everyone knew that too. And when he saw the vision, the head of gold and the breast here of silver and the thighs of brass and the feet of iron. Notice each kingdom got a little harder. King Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom was the head of gold. He interpreted, told him just exactly 
how those kingdoms would succeed each other unto the end. Then, notice, from gold is the softest, silver is next, then brass is next, then iron is next. Harder, harder, colder, farther away. Notice, then, in the midst of all that, Daniel beheld the image until a stone would shoot out of the mountain that was cut out without hands that rolled into the image and broke it and made it like wheat on the summer flash, thrashing floor and the winds dr drive away and the stone grew into a great mountain that covered all the earth and the sea. That was the coming of the Lord Jesus, Amen. which is now at hand. Amen. He goes on. When he was down by the river one day, he fell into a trance and saw a vision. Many of those was with him, they didn't see the vision, for it was given only to Daniel. You see it? Someone can stand right next to you and see things that you can't see to save your life. Amen. Right? Someone said, I don't believe that. I never seen nothing. Because it wasn't for you to see it. Amen. Then it went with Paul. When Paul was struck off of his horse and had to fall onto the dirt and water as it was on the dirt, none of them heard that voice or seen that vision. Paul saw it. None of them saw the star of the cross, the ever observatory, but the wise man. Many things that way God has designated for certain peoples to see and others cannot see. Amen. Oh, I love that. When God in his infant wisdom has predestinated or foreordained for certain things to happen, it can happen to the person sitting right next to you and you'll know nothing about it. Amen. Amen. Look at Dauphin. When Elijah was down at Dauphin and there was all surrounded there by the, by the aliens that come in, the Syrian army, looking for Elijah, the prophet. For when they begin to find out every time the Syrians had come over to Israel to make war, while the Israelites would be laying an ambush for them. And so the king of Syria called them up and said, Now wait a minute. Who is for us and who's for Israel? Said somebody in my group is a spy that's going to tell Israel just where we're coming in at. For they're always there waiting for us. And one man had a little spirituality about him. He said, Nay, my father, but it's the prophet Elijah. Amen. For he knows in his bedroom what you're going to make your move next. Amen. Amen. Oh, when atomic powers begin to shake, I'm so happy that the word of God has tell us where to go to. Amen. Flee to the rock, Christ Jesus. Every man in it is safe and secured. Nothing can harm you. No atomic bombs, no cobalt, nothing else can touch the preserved of God. Amen. Safe, secure, anchored. What a marvelous hope Amen. that we have in Christ Jesus. Notice, there was a man with him, his servant, spiritual boy, walked and poured water on the hands of the prophet. A great position he had. But when he seen the the Syrian army all around Dauphin had it all backed up. He said, my father, look out there. What a great number Why we're surrounded. Now that's the natural. Whenever things seems to go wrong, pointing the finger at you, saying this and that, and the doctor says you can't get well and so forth, that's just the natural thing. You think, oh my, this is the end. But Elijah said, there's more with us than there is with them. Amen. Now you can imagine how that prophet or that uh, Gehazi fell, the servant. He looked over at him and said, well, I don't see nobody. He said, God opened this boy's eyes. Amen. And as soon as God did something, Amen. here it is. Amen. Yet when God opened his spiritual sight. Amen. All around that a prophet stood chariots of fire and angels of fire. Amen. Why he seen they, why the chariots of fire outnumbered that Syrian army by the thousands. Amen. The mountains was on fire. Praise angels of fire. 
horses of fire, chariots of fire. And the Bible said the angels of God encamp about those who fear Him. Just the same tonight. I wonder what would happen if a man here tonight had the power to strike across your eyes and say, look, standing around this tabernacle tonight. You'll be a member here the rest of your life. Sure. Yes, sir. Sometimes you can't see with your natural eyes, but you can feel the impulse of it. Something near. A sixth sense that denotes something is near. Watch him this morning. Opening up the deaf ears. Making the polio cripples walk around here like there was nothing wrong with them. What is it? It's the incense. I mean the sense, the sixth sense. It's conscious, the spirit, that something is near. Amen. Have faith in God. Amen. Now, they didn't. he didn't see that first. But Elijah probably didn't see it. But he asked for the boy's eyes to see it. But Elisha was conscious that they were there. Amen. 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 Thomas one time said, let me put my hands in his side. Jesus said, now you see and believe. How much greater is their reward who has never yet seen and yet believed. Amen. That's us tonight. Amen. And whosoever will believe without seeing. And notice, then Elijah walked out there to where this circumstance was. And he said to them, first he went out there and the Bible said he smote them blind. Blind. And walked right out to them. Everyone had perfect eyesight as far as I know. But the scripture said they were blind. Amen. Amen. A little fellow a few nights ago said to me, if you be a man of God, smite me blind. And I said, you're already blind. Amen. <laughs> already blind. Notice. And he walked out there to where this great circumstance was. This great thing was. And he said, do you look for Elijah? Said, yes. Said, come on, follow me. I'll take you right to him. Elijah said it to them. Amen. What was he blind about? They were blind to the fact that that was the prophet of God. Amen. They were blind to it. And he led them right straight down in the ambush again. Amen. <laughs> They said, come on, I'll show you Elijah. And it was Elijah taking them down there. Amen. And when they looked around and found that they're surrounded around, the king said, my father, must I smite them? He said, would you take a prisoner to smite him? Said, give them something to eat and send them back to their country. That's the way to settle wars, isn't that Amen. right? Amen. Certainly. Oh, my, if we had only adopt that principle today to feed your enemy. Amen. Do good to those who do evil to you. Amen. Holy name. There. Now, the blindness. Now, Elijah, or I mean not Elijah now, but Daniel. Daniel foresaw, he was a prophet. He saw the coming of the Lord. He saw the end time come. He saw the Gentiles start. And if you notice, the Gentiles started off with a, <coughs> a idol worship. They is worshiping a great idol sitting out in the field, an idol of a man. I believe Daniel himself. Because King Nebuchadnezzar had called him Belteshazzar, which was his God. And he started worshiping an image of a righteous, holy man. And Daniel refused to do it. So did the, the Hebrew children, the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. That's the way it was issued in, and it was condemned, that head of gold was issued in by image worship, forced to it, and ended up in a supernatural hand writing a supernatural language that only supernatural understanding could understand it. Amen. 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 That's the way the Gentile kingdom issued in, and it'll go out the same way. Amen. Amen. Right. By supernatural works, supernatural interpretation. Amen. You know what I'm talking Amen. about. Amen. The working Amen. of the supernatural. Amen. Oh, how marvelous. Aren't you happy tonight you believe in the supernatural? Amen. Yes. Now, that all to these vision, he showed him just where the nations would be standing. He showed him how that. There were so many years depended yet on the Jews. He said the Messiah shall come. 
He'll prophesy in the 70th week, which is three and a half years. In the midst of it, he'll be cut off, which is seven years. Seventy weeks is determined for thy people. Seven years of prophecy to the Jews. He said, in Messiah, the priest shall come and prophesy in the midst of the seven weeks, seven days. Will it be cut off? In the abomination, make a desolation, shall stand in his place. And they'll tread down the walls of Jerusalem, Gentiles, for a time, time, and dividing of time. Now, when Messiah comes, Jesus, he preached exactly three and a half years and was cut off for a sacrifice. Amen. The daily obligation was taken away. And the desolate, the abomination that make a desolation, the Muslim of Omer, was stood today in the place of the holy temple. Amen. The Muslim of Omer stands exactly where the temple stood. And he said if they would tread down the walls of Jerusalem, over Jerusalem, until the Gentile dispensation be finished. But at the end of the Gentiles, there would still be three and a half years yet to the Jews. Amen. Now, notice one of the most striking things of prophetic history. I don't claim to know the prophecy of the Bible, but this is like reading a newspaper. Amen. More claim. And what we read here, we know is the truth. Notice, 2,000, yeah, 2,500 years, the Jews has been scattered to every nation under heaven. As God hardened Pharaoh's heart, bringing him back, he hardened Hitler's heart, Mussolini's heart, and so forth, till he drove them back to Palestine. Amen. Coming back, they have made him a nation again, and on May the 6th, 1947, the Jewish flag was raised over Israel for the first time for 2,500 years. Amen. The oldest flag in the world was raised for the first time in 2,500 years. And he said in the last days he'd raise up an ensign over Jerusalem, showing that the time is at hand. And notice, here not long ago I've seen a prophetic reel played from over there, and they're bringing in those Jews by the thousands, by airplanes you see it in the paper and so forth. Look in Life magazine's been packing it. Thousands of Jews returning. And they asked them, said, what are you returning for? Old crippled people packing them on their backs. Their little young ones were. Said, are you coming back to the homeland to die? Said, no. We're coming back to see the Messiah. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, when you see the fig tree putting forth its buds. Amen. And all the other trees Amen. putting forth their buds. No, the time is not our spring is not Amen. summer. Amen. So when you see these things come to pass, Amen. lift up your heads. Amen. Your redemption's drawing nigh. Amen. Tonight Amen. as this world is honeycombed by communism. Amen. Oh, I was talking to a man a while ago, on the, one of the best authorities I believe that I know of. And when he spoke things concerning this nation and communism, it would shake you to your knees. Right. How it's honeycomb. There's nothing solid no more. Not even in our own country hardly. There's only one solid thing that all know will stand. That's the rock Amen. Jesus Christ. Amen. We receive a kingdom that cannot be moved. Amen. And in this day when Amen. everything else is falling, we have a solid Amen. foundation. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Come into it, friends. It's a shelter in a time of storm. What a marvelous thing. He's seen all this coming to pass. We see the Jews now. The Bible said that Jerusalem, and it would blossom as a rose. And how they have irrigated that land. And they also, the prophet spoke and said, that day that water will come from the north. There was no water there then. No springs there then. But in the last few years, there's a gusher come up. As water in the valleys. And they're irrigating as one of the greatest agriculture spots for its size in the world. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you. And all these great chemicals right in the Dead Sea. There's enough chemicals down in the bottom of it that all the wealth of the world couldn't buy. Amen. Of chemicals, uranium and everything else. 
right in the bottom of the Dead Sea, which now belongs to Israel. Amen. Fig tree putting forth this buzz. Not only that, but the other trees are putting forth this buzz. Amen. The communist is putting forth buzz. The Antichrist is putting forth buzz. Amen. And the church of God is putting forth buds. Amen. She's blooming out into her power again. The palmer worm eat part of it. The canker worm eat part of it. The hook worm eat part of it. The caterpillar eat part of it. But God said it'll live again. Amen. She's putting forth buds now. The trees are putting forth buds. Daniel foresaw it and rejoiced. Now, at this time, he said, and at that time, the 12th chapter, and at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince that standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never since there was a nation, even to that time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. Amen. Oh, my. Aren't you glad your name is on his book? Amen. When he, Daniel over here saw him come to the Ancient of Days, whose hair was as white as wool, and he opened up the books, and they were judged every man out of the books. The great white throne judgment. Now, Daniel is given this assurance. At the end of the Gentile dispensation, read the, when you go home in there, tomorrow, read the 11th chapter. You can see how the king of the north is coming down, which is nothing else but Russia, coming down to press against it like a whirlwind. And the great battle of Armageddon will be fought right there near the gates of Jerusalem. Amen. Notice, oh, I love this, and at that time, the people shall be delivered. Everyone that's been found written in the book, Amen. the Lamb's book of life, Michael, the great prince, shall stand up for what? For thy people. Amen. All right. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. When? When these times take place. And some to everlasting life. And some to shame and everlasting contentment. Just as sure as there's an everlasting life, there's an everlasting departure. Amen. It determines on how you treat Jesus Christ in your life. Amen. If you love Him and born again and got His Spirit, you've got everlasting life. If you don't, you have not everlasting life. Amen. If your name's written on the Lamb's Book of Life, you have immortal life. If it's not written there, you'll not be recognized. What is it? All those prophecies are fulfilled. Everything right down to this time. The head of gold has passed away, as Daniel said it would. The Babylonian kingdom. Succeeding that, he said, would be the Medes and Persians. They succeeded the Babylonian kingdom. And they fell away to who? The Grecians. Alexander the Great. And they fell away to what? The Romans. And the Romans broke up to all the world. The Eastern and Western Rome, the two legs. And he said iron and clay was on the toes. The ten toes, the ten kingdoms. And he said they wouldn't mix that intermarry among one another. Romanism and Protestantism. And in that day, when this thing exists, then the stone will shoot out of the mountain without hands and rolled in and broke the thing to pieces. And it took the place of the image. So my brethren, we're having troubles tonight. Wars. Rumors of wars. Earthquakes in diverse places, perplexed of time, distress between nations. I've just come back from overseas, and I haven't seen a nation but what's trembling in their shoes. Amen. They don't know what's going to take place next. Amen. But aren't we thankful tonight that we do know what's going to take place Amen. next? Amen. The Lord Amen. Jesus Christ shall come the second time in glory and majesty. And every name of this town written in the Lamb's Book of Life shall rise with their loved ones to meet the Lord in Amen. Oh, what a marvelous thing. That 
last reason we say our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood with righteousness. Amen. All around my soul gives way. He's our hope and stay. Yes. And at that time, Michael shall stand the great prince. Michael was Christ, of course, who fought the angelic wars in heaven with the devil. Satan and Michael fought together, or fought against each other, rather. And now, and at that time, he said, as many was found written in the book, was delivered. And those who had done righteous, watch this, and they that, and they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and as a, and they that turn away many to righteousness as the stars forever. I look at that sometime, I think, brother. I go out in the morning. I love to get up early. Don't you like to rise early? Amen. I remember when Brother and I were in the mountains. Real early in the morning, around 4 o'clock, we'd rise up, look hanging back there, and there was the morning star. It gets real dark just before the break of day. We see the darkness gathering now. What is it? It's light pressing against the darkness. One has to give away. All the creeping things that's been running through the night, when that sun comes up, they take to shelter when the light shines. Night and dark, night and light cannot exist in the same building. It's either dark or it's light. And light is so much more powerful than darkness, so is Christ so much more powerful than all the things in the world. Amen. Now, we're taught by scientists as the light begins to come, it condenses the darkness. And the darkness gathers all of its hosts together to fight against the light. But the light prevails and comes on. Amen. And the Bible said in the last days that Satan will go back like a roaring lion. He's gathered today all of his enemies, all of his friends, our enemies, and congregating them together, heaping up under a big head the mark of the beast Amen. in the ecclesiastical realms. The confederation of churches all uniting and making themselves a great organization as same as Catholicism. And the world empires are uniting themselves together and forming up a big head over there in the political realms called communism. And the light of God is pressing on Amen. what's happening at the same time to make it the Christian church, the church of the living God is being anointed Power is coming to her. Amen. She's received the Holy Spirit. Last year, in the full gospel rims, was a million five hundred thousand conversions. Amen. Amen. The greatest that swept the land for years after years. Amen. We're not in the alley no more. We're up on Hallelujah Boulevard. Amen. Amen. We're not in the shed no more. One million five hundred thousand conversions in the full gospel race last year. Succeeded Catholicism and everything else. Oh, my. What is it? Life together. Great healing services is come to go. Hallelujah. Way down in Formosa, healing campaigns are going on. Amen. Way down in Japan, healing campaigns are going on. Up in the frozen regions of the earth, healing campaigns are going Amen. on. Around the world, healing Hallelujah. campaigns. Hallelujah. Men are receiving the Holy Ghost of every Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We're at the end time. What's the doing? Glory. And the devil says, now is my time. He's congregating his forces. Confederation churches trying to stop it. Amen. Say they're nothing but a bunch of noise boxes. There's nothing to them. It's all fanaticism. There's no such a thing as working in the supernatural. At the same time, the head of the American Medical Association writes a piece of paper and said, no man's got a right to come into a sick room to minister to people that don't believe in Almighty God and accept Him as His help. Amen. Amen. The Christian Herald interviewing doctors last month gave write-ups that I couldn't write myself if I was trying to brag on them. What is it? In the midst of everything, God will cause his enemies to testify to his glory. Yes, Amen. sir. Hallelujah. Glory. The doctor said we can only administer AIDS 
But God is the healer. Amen. I said them great men Holy. just finding out what we bunch of nitwits know all the time. That's yeah. right. Some of these glorious days, you'll find out that this bunch of power that changes harlots to ladies and drunkards to gentlemen. Hey, Christian, it's the very power that will lift them out of this earth and Amen. take them home in the rapture. Amen. 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 It may be too late. It may be too late for many. At that day, Michael shall stand for the people. He is standing for the nations. He's standing for the people. And many of those that sleep in the dust of the earth, some shall rise to everlasting shame and contentment. But those that be wise and turn many to righteousness shall shine as the stars forever and ever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But if our college, why should I care? Amen. They're building a palace for me over there. Amen. Come over to see me someday. Hallelujah. What is it? I walked out and looked at that great morning star as she begins to move yonder. What does the morning star say? The morning star's only reflecting Amen. the supreme light of the sun coming. Amen. Is that right? Amen. The morning star, the reason it's so bright, you know how it is? The sun's so much closer to it. Amen. It's a pressing on. And the morning star hails the coming of the sun. Amen. All right, you morning stars, it's time to go to hell and he's coming. Amen. Shine, morning stars, rise with me. It says the sun will soon be here. Amen. When we look and see that morning star, it's like glistening in the skies. It means that the sun will shine pretty soon. Amen. And when we see the morning stars of God rising and shining to the glory of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, you, shows that that supreme one is pressing on. Amen. Amen. The lights are gathering with the morning star. Hold, yeah. hold on. It isn't long till daylight. Yeah. Hold on. It's not long till daylight. Just keep holding on. The sister Murphy and them used to sing. Just keep holding on. Daylight's soon coming. Hold on to it. The morning stars are shining to the world now. Lighting up the world. Just before the great darkness. And a great thunderbolt from heaven. The coming of the Lord. The name of the Lord. Listen close now. Now I said, I would look to the morning star and I thought, oh, morning star. I looked down one day, stand there, Brother Woods and I. He just got the fire started and we was going to get breakfast. And I turned and looked at the morning star, walked out there in the cedar bushes and the winds whispering through the pines. I stood there, felt good breathing, that good fresh morning air, and kind of frosty, plenty frosty. Go down to the creek, get a bucket of water, freeze before you get up. Stand up there, raising up my hands out there in those pines. I looked at the morning star. I thought, oh, looky here, what 45 years has done for me. I said, oh, looky here, getting wrinkled, my hands getting wrinkled, hair slipping out, teeth going. Oh, what 45 years has done for me. But I said, looking under that morning star. Is just as pretty and bright as it was the day that God floated off his hands and said, Hey, Amen. Amen. Then I thought of this scripture. Amen. I said, But God promised if we'd be wise and turn many to righteousness, we would outshine the stars forever and ever. I thought, Morning star, you're shining now, but wait till we get there. Amen. Outshine the stars forever. I can hear that wind coming down the hill just about to break a day, whistling through those pines, saying, there's the land beyond the river that we call the sweet forever. And we only reach that shore by faith degree. One by one we gain the portal there to dwell with the immortal when they ring those golden bells for you and me. What a great thing. They that be wise shall turn many to righteousness. And they shall outshine the stars Amen. forever and forever. So what difference does it make anyhow? What's this little span here for? This little dust of the earth, spineless worm. Little old mortal body's got to corrupt and go back to the dust and skin worms will eat it up. Oh my! Let me rise with all that's in me and shine to the glory of God. Lay aside every weight that the Holy Spirit can transmit his powers and glory Amen. through the preaching of the gospel and the healing of the sick to vindicate Jesus Christ raised from the dead. Amen. 
Oh, my. Forever and forever. But thou, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. For many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. Then I, Daniel, beheld and looked, and behold, there stood other two, the one on this side of the bank of the river, and one on the other side of the bank of the river. And the one said to the man clothed in linen, Holy Spirit, which was upon the waters, peoples, multitudes, Holy Ghost upon the people. Oh. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The Holy Ghost. Amen. Revelations 15, 16 says that the thickness of multitudes, the water means thickness of multitudes of people. Amen. And the earth one in white linen waving himself up and down upon the waters with his hand up to heaven, swearing by him that lives forever and ever. Amen. When these things happen, time shall be no more. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Time shall be no more. Swore that when we see these nations breaking and things taking place like that, the mystery of God's already accomplished. What is it, the mystery of God? God in you, the hope of glory shining Amen. forth, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And he said, When these things take place, time shall be no more. Hey. They that know their God, said Daniel, in the last days many shall run to and fro, knowledge shall increase. But they that know their God Amen. shall do exploits Amen. in the last days. Amen. They shall do exploits. Amen. Oh, what exploits of faith is breaking around Amen. the world tonight. Hallelujah. Over and over. All over the nation's great campaigns. The blind are seeing the deaf are hearing the lames are walking. People of all walks of life are coming in and receiving the Holy Spirit. Not only the poor and pauper, but the millionaire and everything else. Yes. God's taken and putting his robe up on each one and giving them an invitation to the wedding supper. Amen. And the great high priest Melchizedek will come someday and we'll eat the communion anew with him in the kingdom of God Amen. one of these Amen. great glorious days. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I'm so happy tonight to be here. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Some great day, some marvelous day, time shall be no more. See, we come out of eternity. We was before there was a world. Did you know that? Amen. God made man in his own image. Where was you, he said to Job, when Job thought he had some wisdom? said, that, where was you when I laid the foundation of the world? Before I laid it. When the sons of God sang together and the morning stars shouted for joy. Amen. The morning stars shouted for joy. Them shining ones shouted for joy. When they seen that someday they would tabernacle here on earth, and the king Melchizedek would come in the righteousness of God and give his life to redeem us to God back again and out shining stars forever and ever. Where was you now laid the foundation of the world? They call where they're hooked at. <laughs> Tell me what they stand upon. Said, gird up yourself, I want to talk to you like a man. And Job fell on his face like a dead man. He couldn't stand it. God was there. There you are. Where was you when I laid the foundations of the world? This glorious gospel has been prophesied by the Old Testament prophets. It's come down through the ages. It's shared tonight. It's vindicated by God. She swept the world. They've tried to put it out, but try to put out a far more windy day and a, and a dry timber before it. Why you can't do it more you fight it, more winds you give it. More winds you give it, harder it'll burn. That's the only thing. We used to have a little fire out in the mountains when I used to try to make a fire burn early in the morning. I'd get out there and throw some sticks on it and go to smoking. I know as sure as a little smoke, there's fire there somewhere. The only thing I have to do is take my hat and go to fanning it. And it finally caught up. That's what the church needs today is another fanning of their mighty rushing wind like fell over there at Pentecost to fan it back Amen. into faith again to Amen. receive the Lord Jesus Christ and His coming in glory. Look at the signs, wonders. Mysterious things are happening. Earthquakes in diverse places. Tidal waves breaking the bank, just like Jesus said would do. Man's heart failing. Fear. Fear. Oh, who's going to throw the first cobalt bomb? What will take place in a few hours? The whole world will be annihilated. While we have been in the presence of God for, if more Lord drops out of the plane, that's right. What will it be? There will be nothing. 
but we'll drop this old robe of flesh, we'll drop and rise and seize the everlasting prize and shout Amen. while passing through the air, farewell. Amen. 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 It'll all be over, we'll go home, lay this old body down, exchange it for a crown and a robe beyond her. That'll fade not away. Turn Amen. back from an old man and old woman to a young person Amen. to live forever Amen. and ever. Thou shine in immortality to walk up and down the streets of glory in the presence Amen. of the Lord Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen. Saying glory to God in the highest. He has done great things in our midst. While we're in the journey today with God's power vindicating everything on every hand, let's look around and see where we're at. Look at the fig tree putting forth buds. Look at the other trees putting forth buds. Amen. Look at the nations putting forth buds. Uh, look at the Holy Ghost Church putting Amen. forth buds. Look at Pentecost Amen. repeating. Amen. Come back. Same sign. Hallelujah. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank Thee tonight for the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, for His great supreme being. For his anointing of the Holy Ghost. Amen. We thank thee because that he's here now. A living, ever living. Making intercessions upon our confession. We thank thee for his healing power. That snatched us as firebrands, Lord. Brought us from the grave. Has raised us up. And renewed our strength. And given us power. That we might go forth and shine here in this darkness. We thank thee for this, Father. We pray that you'll bless everyone that's unsaved. Bless all the saved. Grant it, Father. Heal all the sick. Get glory. Bless this little tabernacle. Bless the people. Bless Brother Neville, the pastor. Bless all the deacons, the trustees. Grant it, Lord. Lay your healing hands upon them. And if the devil comes in and calls little differences, heal it, Lord, right quick. With the bomb of Gilead. Grant it, Lord. Pour out the anointing oil upon them. Make them humble in heart, sweet in soul. May they walk in the footsteps of the Lord Jesus, the physical Things happen to them and they become sick. May the angel of God stand near to apply the blood of Jesus. Amen. Granted, Jesus. heal all the sickness. Help me, Lord, as I break out down into the fields, seeing those great need. What I need in the day. Millions are dying. 144,000 heathens died today without knowing Christ. Help me, dear God. Bless us all together. And someday, rise us from this earth, down our Lord, to sit with you in your throne in the heavenly places up down in Christ Jesus. Grant it, Father. Until that time, may health and strength be ours, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I want to see him. Amen. I want to look up on his face. There to sing forever of his saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me in my heart. Just a moment. How many Methodists is sure raise up your hand? Methodists? How many Baptists is sure raise up your hand? How many Presbyterians here raise up your hands? How many Nazarenes raise up your hands? How many Pentecostals raise up your hands? How many Lutherans raise up your hands? We were all here, look, a great big group mixed up, all sitting in one place in heavenly places, rejoicing in a blessing. Amen. Now I want the Methodists to shake hands with the Baptists, the Baptists with the Lutherans. Turn right around, shake one of their hands, and turn back this way. Now they sang it. Uh, a parting soul to Calvary, to a crimson flow.
make you feel like you're all scared. How many Christians is here to raise your hand? Everybody believes on the Lord Jesus Christ, raise up your hand. Amen. Oh, what a wonderful thing. Now, as we separate, as we go from our different homes, let's go with prayer now. Let's sing our good old dismissing song. How many knows it? Take the name of Jesus with you. Everybody together now, let's sing. Take the name of Jesus with you.